my morning routine is generally pretty stable. I have my coffee and I kind of go through the internet and look for interesting stories. Well, I came across one today that kind of inspired me, so I thought I'd talk about it for a moment. Many times the science denial community, not us, actual scientists, claiming that they simply are good at memorizing things they read in books. They really don't know the process of becoming a scientist, so I thought I would kind of go through that real quick and give an example of somebody that went through the process. Now, in most developed countries, uh, people by the time they're 17 or 18 have been through something called high school, which is basic life skills, uh, math, social studies, basic sciences, etc. And from there, they go on to either develop a trade and learn how to do something, or they go on to what's called higher education and learn how to think a little deeper. By the time they get their undergraduate degree, they have a little bit more knowledge in a particular field of study than the average Joe. They may have a useful skill, such as engineering, for example, and they can go off to become engineers. Or they have degrees in history or philosophy or communications or social sciences and go on to become customer service reps. Now, a select few go on to continue their studies postgraduate in the ivory towers, which I always thought was a funny name because most of the university buildings I've ever seen are brick and they're not towers. But be that as it may, your master's program is approximately two to three years after you graduate from university, and it's in a specialized field of study. And in addition to the coursework that you take, you have to do something called a thesis. So for example, my master's program is going to be in physics, and I will probably do my thesis on studying the rotation of asteroids. Following that, you can continue on to get something called a PhD. And a PhD is what I would call a citable authority in your field. So a PhD thesis is a little bit more complex than a master's thesis. It's generally longer and more detailed, and it is designed specifically to advance a concept in your field. In other words, it's original science in your field that you conducted. Uh, in the solar system, there's something called zodiacal dust, which is dust that orbits the sun. It causes a glow in the sky at dawn and dusk, and it's a subject that a lot of people don't think about because they don't notice it. However, scientists do, and one particular astrophysics student, uh, when he was looking for a subject for his PhD, took an interest in this. His idea was to study the zodiacal dust cloud with infrared radio astronomy, calculate the velocity of that dust using the Doppler effect, and then trying to determine whether or not all the dust came from within our solar system or we were getting some intrusion of interstellar zodiacal dust. Not only was this a rather interesting but obscure phenomenon, he actually built and deployed some of the instruments that he used to measure it. And the result was a 256-page doctoral thesis. Now, an interesting thing about this particular thesis is that it took quite a long time to finish. Um, the needs of family and work intervened, and it took him a couple of decades to actually finish this and get his PhD in astrophysics. Now, as time went on, he combined his interest in astrophysics and astronomy with his interest in art and began to use the data from the New Horizons flyby of the dwarf planet Pluto to develop a technique to image Pluto in three dimensions. This brought him to the attention of NASA, and he was invited to employ his 3D technique uh, to identify and evaluate potential landing sites on the asteroid Bennu in preparation for the OSIRIS-REx mission. The result was a successful sampling, and we were able to return to Earth samples of an asteroid from the early solar system. And the author of this thesis, astrophysics PhD candidate Brian Harold May. That's right, Dr. Sir Brian Harold May. And to paraphrase Paul Harvey, and now you know the rest of the story. This is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by for this short video. I'll see you again soon.